Just because the reason I say that is just because this is going to be kind of oval. Yeah, right. You like this, and then it might be kind of cool if yeah. the back kind of did that. You wouldn't really see the back. You won't right? see it, but at the top you'd see it, yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Walk Wild, everyone. Thanks for joining us. In this week's episode, we're going to be starting to excavate our dugout shelter. Before we do that, we're going to set up a tarp quickly over the top of the excavation site to protect us from the rain that is forecast for later on this afternoon. It should just about cover it, huh? Like that, like that, and like that. And then you go, whoop, and then bring the two loops together. And then I put my, I put that through there. And then you pull the two loose ends, and that's a constrictor okay. that just tightens up. And then you can pull that, and that's now going to sit with the. Yeah, instead of all of the weight on there, it will spread across that little yeah, cool. nubbin. With the top set up, we're just about ready to break ground. Pretty exciting day for us. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Immediately after the shovels dug into the ground, we realized there was uh, quite a lot of surface roots in the first sort of foot, which made it quite hard work to get through. We've watched a lot of dugout videos on YouTube, and for the most part, they're made to look so simple and so fast, the excavation process, but our experience was exactly the opposite. We knew it was going to be hard work, but man, it took a lot of hard work and a lot of time even to get just this first little section done. After four or five hours of digging, we thought it was time to change pace and bring down a fire pit that Eric had buried in the ground on his property. Oh, we had that now, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> get digging, Debbie. I'm digging. But let's just... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I just, just wanted to one. get like you guys a, a mark of where when it you was look up, this thing by doing flat. Uh, clearing that out. You'll see. What? You do what you're hmm? doing, and when you look up here, you're gonna have a flat wall. <laughs> okay. Ten minutes you later, it, Debbie's honey. done. You go get it, honey. One of the pivotal pieces to have in a bushcraft camp to really start making it feel a bit more homey is to get a fireplace or a fire pit uh, set up. So getting this in, getting a fire, the first fire going was really nice after a hard day's work of digging. Uh, just digging, digging, digging all day. Need some smaller stuff really. We might need a little bit more. It's okay. It's gonna go. Yeah, you got it. Nice. Pretty good because you've got that nice dry kindling underneath, so yeah. it looks like that's going already pretty good. It should burn down. After we got the fireplace in, it was time to build a temporary makeshift bench for us to sit on so we could relax by the fire for an hour or two. And you go around and you want it to come facing up the same as this piece. Uh -huh. Right. So it's basically just another overhand knot, but you need to make sure that the rabbit head is up facing this piece. Same. Yeah, okay. as that. So Take that's how it that's why it will jam and not slip. Like that. This is just a temporary bench until we make something a little bit more permanent, but definitely nice to have something to sit down and relax on and ponder the ideas for the rest of the camp. All is still here. It looks pretty dry actually. Yeah, this is not there is some as I'm sure any seasoned 
excavators or dugout shelter builders will, will probably know we aren't really using the proper tools for this, or at least not the most effective tools. Although Ned and Abby were eager to help dig the hole out with us. Underneath the first foot of black dirt was pretty much solid clay, which was really awesome. Even though it was difficult to dig out, it was nice to know that we'll have a big pile of clay to use for all of the wattle and daub and uh, the other kind of construction projects that we would like to use clay for. Tons of progress, it's looking really good. I, I, we do need to widen it out a little bit. I think so, yeah. I reckon, yeah. yeah. If we're gonna put beds, we have to come wider by about half a foot each side. Yeah. To allow for the, for the, the, the walls. The walls and the wattle and daub. Yep, and then if we wanna cut that channel into for the fireplace it's going to take some time so we're going to be doing this for probably most of the day yeah it'd be really nice if we could get to the to the fireplace because we could always do the fireplace right and then continue taking it wider or no i guess when we're in while we're in the the, the flow of just getting it out but yeah i mean it's the same thing it's this it's the same job it's just we have to dig out that channel at the back yeah. But luckily we've got someone to do all the labor for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well done, Eric. How's it for you? Oh, it's good, fun. Getting a good workout. It is a good workout, isn't it? <laughs> At this point we decided it would be nice to dig out a rectangular section from the back of the shelter uh, to make space for a chimney for a fireplace. You're not spatting enough. <laughs> spatting? Spatling. There's still plenty of excavation work on the sides to do tidying up, but we wanted to experiment with the clay, see how it worked to kind of build with it and construct with it. Whether or not the clay will stay over the next three weeks while we're away with all the crazy rain and weather is yet to be de determined, but trying it out will be a fun project. It's looking pretty cool. Yeah. So just a channel down the middle for air. Yeah? Yeah. Insane. Just dig, dig, dig your life away.
I think this should be enough, right? I'm gonna make a makeshift arch for the fireplace. It's exciting. The idea of the it's sapling go. arch is to help take the weight of the clay so it, it, it doesn't uh, kind of collapse or just fall into a mush. Probably start mixing some clay. we've been doing bushcraft we've always been really excited and wanting to work with clay but never quite found a project or got around to it uh, at the old treehouse shelter so it's exciting to be using it for the first time oh man this is gonna work so well hopefully make sure you get your hands around the back too yeah, to I'm like... gonna put some around yeah. the back I think Weirdly therapeutic, just being like, yep, yeah, I'm playing with this. Just get it in there, bud. How's the bottom? This is like ASMR, this is central, man. Some close up there. squishy. Time to start firing it. Pretty much. You got more mud? Want to mud it? Thoughts on doing this for the very first time was it was incredibly relaxing and enjoyable, very therapeutic. Just getting your hands covered in in clay, wet clay, and smoothing it out and sticking it on was awesome. It was good fun. It was a nice change of pace from all the digging we'd done earlier in the day. I might wash my hands and get fire stuff ready. Fire! Let's do it. a bit and then that's enough
Thanks for joining us today, guys, on our slightly tedious and very time-consuming project. Hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, we'll see you next time.